what's up Giants fans, Hub Watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at it again with another New York Giants video. And today's one we're going to talk about a little bit about NFL.com's rookie class rankings or is it just rookie rankings for the NFC East. The way that they graded out each draft class from each team that is the Washington football team, Dallas Cowboys, New York Giants and uh, Philadelphia Eagles how they grade them out and how they stacked up and I'm not even here to talk about the individual grades so much so as I am to talk about like the Giants just stay getting disrespected bro all right like we, we just gonna get right into it first of all on this list the Giants are ranked the second lowest right I don't even care about that I don't care if we're ranked the lowest of the lowest, you know, not just in the NFCs, but in the entire NFL. What I do care about is that we have a fair draft grade on that class, and we do not have a fair draft grade on that class. They gave us a C plus overall for that draft class, and I, I never put out a video on my own like this, you know, I've thought about it a lot. Should I put out a video grading? you know what i thought about the 2020 draft class and grading the picks and whatnot and the reason i don't put it out is because every time i try to record it and i go into my explanations for the grades i find myself saying oh but you know it's subject to change because they're just rookies and it's like i always come back to that point so you know i kind of get caught up in my own sort of logic and in my own kind of you know tangent going off and whatnot but i, I just haven't done it um, if I push myself, maybe I can, I don't know. But I think that a C-plus grade is completely unfair to the Giants and to the draft class. Um, especially when you look at the grades that both the Cowboys and Washington got, B-plus each. And then the Eagles got a C, which <laughs> isn't too surprising. And I'm not even talking about, like, this is because I hate the Eagles or anything. But it's like, yeah, it kind of makes sense that they got a C grade. They had a, they had a pretty bad draft class but but when you look at these other two teams right washington they had chase young in the first round uh antonio gibson in the second two amazing impact players and i'll be honest with you probably the two most impactful rookies in the nfl you know this past year you know on the offensive and de defensive side that played for one team you know what i'm saying like both gibson and young were an integral part of their respective offenses and defenses this year. Then you continue going, you got Sadiq Charles, Antonio Gandy Golden, Keith Ishmael, Kalike Hudson, uh, Cameron Curl, James Smith Williams. I'll be honest with you, the only name I recognize past those two is Antonio Gandy Golden. And maybe he did have a little bit of an impact because Washington's wide receiving core, they got a, they got a good wide receiving core over there. It's not particularly strong, but it's good. So, you know, maybe who's involved in rotations or something. But if we're talking about impact, Young and Gibson alone is enough to put this, you know, class over the top and make it worth it. You go down to the Cowboys. They had CeeDee Lamb, Trayvon Diggs, Neville Gallimore, Reggie Robinson, Tyler Biotish, Bradley Ine, Ben DiNucci. <laughs> and Ben DiNucci definitely had, he definitely had an impact on the team. You know what I'm saying? After Dak went down, they, they had a... Just, you know, kind of not necessarily a QB carousel, but they had just any QB starting back there. So, you know, CeeDee Lamb obviously had an impact. Trayvon Diggs had an impact. Tyler Biotish at one point had an impact. And Ben DiNucci. So, you got a fair amount of rookies here that actually um, immediately were useful to their team and came into use for their team. And though their first two picks, once again, kind of like Washington, were like really impactful on the offensive and defensive side. So this right here, the Cowboys, they had a good 2020 draft class. And I already talked about the Eagles, but you know, kind of quickly going over theirs, you talk about Jalen Rager, Jalen Hurts, two picks once again that had great impact more hurts than rager you know what i'm saying maybe rager in the future will have more impact but jalen hurts was definitely the guy that shown more than davion taylor kevon wallace jack driscoll john hightower sean bradley quez watkins prince tago winago and casey Tuhill. sean bradley i think had a little bit of an impact but then again that's because the eagles linebacking core is so weak so it doesn't exactly surprise me but their c grade on their class kind of makes sense to me maybe it should be a little bit higher maybe a c plus but that makes sense what doesn't make sense and the whole reason for this video is the c plus grade on the giants and i might go into a little bit of a rant here before i do let's get a quick word from the sponsor so Manscaped hooked me up with a bunch of tools and formulations from their Perfect Package 3.0 kit. So if you guys know Manscaped, then you know the lawnmower, and that comes with the Perfect Package 3.0. The all new Lawnmower 3.0 has that cutting edge ceramic blade and their new advanced skin safe technology to prevent nicks and cuts when grooming down there. They really went above and beyond with this. It's also waterproof and it has an LED light for when it gets dark in these situations. But that's just the lawnmower. 
The perfect package also came with the crop preserver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. Pair that up with their crop reviver in the package and you got the perfect duo to prevent the jewels from sweating, smelling and sticking to yourself. Now they already hooked me up with the perfect package 3.0 but they threw in two free gifts as well. Their anti-chafing manscaped boxer briefs and a travel shed bag to store all of these grooming materials. I gotta tell you guys, the anti-chafing boxer briefs, they are probably the most comfortable pair of underwear that I've ever worn in my life. Highly recommend them. Never do you ever have to go and get some second-rate products and materials to take care of yourself again. You guys know about Manscaped. They're the only company in the world that does this and that specializes in this. So go over there right now. Use the promo code HUB, H-U-B, get 20% off and free shipping on your order. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. So the Giants, of course, as Giants fans, we know what our draft class was. We had Andrew Thomas in the first. We had a steal in McKinney in the second, although can't judge it completely yet because he was injured. Had Matt Perth in the third, who we hope to become the right tackle of the future and who also had quite a bit of snaps at right tackle and left tackle this year. Darnay Holmes in the fourth, who was one of the best rookie cornerbacks this year, coming out the fourth round. Shane Lemieux in the fifth, another lineman that got quite, you know, a good amount of snaps as a starter or just being in the line in general. Cam Brown in the sixth, Carter Coughlin in the seventh, TJ Brunson in the seventh, Chris Williamson, Tay Crowder. Listen, they gave this a C plus grade. That's completely unfair to me. In my opinion, the Giants had one of the best draft classes in 2020 purely based off of the fact that every single one of our rookies except for one contributed and we had 10 picks nine of our 10 picks saw the field and i'm not talking about they just saw the field for a split second or they saw the field only on special teams no 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 nine of our 10 picks saw the field as you know either starters or playing star type snaps or just having an impact on the game our team was really young this year, particularly on the defensive side, and we had a lot of rookies running around on the field. You know what I'm saying? The Giants, in terms of just impact, in terms of players that played right away and, and did something for their team, definitely had the best draft class when you think about that. And that's why they should be up there as one of the best draft classes in 2020. Andrew Thomas was a starter all year except for one game. And he played on a he played on an injured ankle and, and there's a lot more context that I don't want to get into right now because I put out a video on this just yesterday that we need to talk episode. Go check it out. Andrew Thomas is the franchise left tackle of the future. That right there, good pick. Xavier McKinney. Now, like I said, you can't really judge it too much because he was injured. But in the limited snaps he did get, he looked good. Hopefully, you know, he is a safety of the future. I'm going to leave that ungraded for now. Matt Pert is another good pick in my opinion because even though he didn't start that much, he had a lot of good splits with both Fleming and Thomas out there at both tackle spots. So Darnay Holmes was our starting slot cornerback as a rookie and was the only rookie cornerback in the entire NFL to not let up a single touchdown all year. That is incredibly impressive, and he was improving as the year went on as well. One of the best examples of that is how he did against C.D. Lamb their first game versus their second game. Darnay Holmes was one of the best CBs in this class, and he was in the fourth round. Shane Lemieux, really good run blocking guard, needs to improve in pass protection 100%, but he's taken to the fifth. That's understandable. He saw a lot more snaps than any other fifth round offensive lineman, though, in my opinion. Cam Brown and Car Car Carter Coughlin, respectively. Two young edge rushers, and Brown wasn't even an edge rusher, he was an inside backer that we moved to outside. But two young edge rushers that saw a lot of time on the field because of injuries, but they took their opportunity and they ran with it. Whenever both of these guys were out on the field, the Giants were legitimately getting pressure off the edge. And it was because they're the smaller, more slicker, more slimmer, faster type of edge rushers, but they were doing their job. Brunson now he is one dude that was on special teams but he was out there and even if you want to throw him out all right fine that's eight of ten that's eight percent right and of course Tay Crowder Mr. Irrelevant I'm calling it right now he's the best Mr. Irrelevant pick in all of NFL history you talk about your bro your first game playing as inside linebacker next to Blake Martinez who was one of the best inside linebackers in the NFL this year you get a fumble recovery for a touchdown to win the game 
Are you, are you kidding me? Or is that his second game? Whatever it was. Yeah, it was his second because his first game was against the Cowboys. And guess what? He almost got to pick that game as well. The thing about Tate Crowder that I always say is that it's not like he particularly excels in one thing. He's just good enough in each part of his linebacker game that he needs to be. And he always makes a play. That's the one thing that comes to mind about me with Tate Crowder. He always makes a play. He's not the best in pass protection, although he is kind of good. And I really hope he could develop into the linebacker too that we need because he has the build to be it you know what i'm saying he's not the best in run stopping he's not the best in tackling but he's always making a play when he's out on the field and that's what matters the most you're having an impact the giants had more rookies start for them in my opinion than any other, any other team in the nfl our entire defense like half of it was rookies playing out there you know even the, the top guys were seeing time this is just completely unfair and you look at a list like this sometimes and you just say to yourself you know whoever made it didn't look at the games they went at the end of the year, they looked at the stat sheet, they looked at the win and the loss column, that's what they did. They didn't look at any context to it. And that's how you know that this list is irrelevant to me. And that's part of the reason I did the Andrew Thomas video as well. Once again, go check it out. It's because you could tell some people just didn't look at the games. And context is important, but that's what I got for y'all today. Let me know what you all think. Maybe my Giants bias is showing, maybe it's not. Put your thoughts down below and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.